where does even one begin for the past four years leading up today i'm pretty sure you can also relate i've gone through all sorts of emotions up and down roller coaster ride that's what it's been like and since january 6 there's also been these emotions of like anxiety uh some form of fear of what was going to happen today but thankfully we have a new president in place and vice president Many congrats, Joe Biden and Kamara Harris. Wishing you all the success. It's not going to be an easy job. I started off with, uh, let me go to the 6th of January. I started off with uh, emotions of fear, anxiety, just concern about what's going to happen leading up till today. And then today, I woke up with a feeling, actually starting from yesterday, it was almost like a countdown of uh, today feelings of uh excitement couldn't wait was counting down to the time when there was going to be like the transition the inauguration and then those feelings of like excitement but at the same time like my mood started to change and now i'm in a somber mood and also one that is best described as um sadness and i can't pinpoint it the only thing that i i can possibly get close to pinpointing is that we are still in this position where it's still unknown what the future will be and whether justice will be served at all. So let me lead on into what I wanted to discuss with you today and connect with you on. Okay, so I was reflecting earlier on just this memory came through and sparked through like my mind and it was a reflection of the women's march which would have been tomorrow but in 2017 on the 21st it was the day after uh this i'll call him and this is the only word that's been coming to mind today this evil alien invader was inaugurated and that was in 2017 on the 20th of january okay so bear with me because i'll read off what i wrote so that i can stay on point so it all started january 21st 2017 when we joined the women's march in downtown washington dc with uh, my sister and my mom and the march was mainly uh, prompted majorly by several anti-women and offensive statements that had been made by this evil mad alien invader who just left our city today on Ma on January 20, 2020. How curious is that? I just noticed that it is 20, 2020. Okay, that is a little bit spooky. Yes. So... Our march took place day after this evil man was inaugurated on January 20, 2017 and during his first 100 days in office. Ever since then, our days have been filled with ongoing shock, horror, disbelief, emotional and physical torment, feelings of emotional distress, depression, anger, resentment, grief, and anxiety, you name it, everything. We have had to sit with our emotional torments and turmoil for four years. Beyond our cries for women's rights, we have had to endure more painful losses in front of our eyes as our sisters and brothers were gunned down in front of our camera lenses where we couldn't do anything but sit there and go through the emotions of uh, utter shock horror disbelief and then the feelings of grief because it could have been any one of us or anyone that we loved or cared for and it was also just because it was another human being that had been afflicted with this and their families as well we have had to endure millions of losses and to hear about them due to outward negligence and denial by this evil person who was in office losses due to uh covid some of which could have been um, avoided had he uh, stepped up and committed to wanting to take part in contributing to helping people 
we have had to relieve ongoing uh, trauma and fear of criminal acts and injustice on an ongoing basis for the past four years. Although we women dispersed with our, uh, into our respective cities and countries, regardless of where we came from and went back to our lives, we never forget. We will never forget. Although our voices, our loud chants, our screams, our cries of humane acts became quieter on a global and national scale, we never forgot and never remained silent. Although our footsteps became quieter, we continued to march on in our respective cities and countries. We continued to stand up and speak out for equality and justice for all, regardless. We continued to speak out and indeed that black lives mattered. Four years on, let's not forget that, 91% of black women voted for Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. Let us not forget, it was 57% women who voted for President Biden in 2020. Moreover, let's not forget that it was 42% of women who still voted with a desire for this evil man to continue to be in the office, despite his inhumane and criminal acts. We all have seen what injustice looks like out in broad daylight. Let's not forget that. Let us not forget the nights that we stayed up wondering if somebody we loved or cared for was safe. Let's not forget that all the needless and endless loss, grief and pain we had to endure, regardless of whether it was our family member or not, it was still a human being that we cared for and had the right to feel something for because that is a human act and humankind uh, a human act of love and kindness let us not forget that this new administration unfortunately also has to prove themselves and they also have a burden that they are carrying on which they they've taken over from the previous administration let us hope that they're also able to demonstrate what eco justice looks like when terrorists and their leaders commit criminal acts. Let's hope we can see the true picture of what justice equally looks like. As this evil person has now left our city, Washington, D.C., let's not forget that he will continue to walk amongst us freely as though he never committed any humane acts and crimes. Today at least shows that shows us a small picture of what justice looks like. That there is good, that good can prevail over evil, that good can overcome injustices. T today shows that there's still hope for a better tomorrow. Okay, so I hope America will move beyond that everyone finds their way back to unity and being a united nation. That you find you as an individual on your own, you find your own way back to love and kindness if you had lost it along the way. That you stand up for injustice against another human being and call it out when you see it as unjust and rightly so. So I'll mention like a quote to you. Women are the ones that bear the greatest burden. We are the ones who nurture societies. And I'll leave the name below. Sorry, I didn't like capture that. On that note, Auntie Kamara, <laughs> no pressure there. I hope you will become an active female contributor in nature as we start to go through a healing process, regardless of where we are in the world. From now, I am still waiting to fully exhale. Cannot breathe until justice is rightly so, is rightly served, and justly so. For today, I want to wish Joe Biden and Kamara Harris 
many congratulations again i only hope your path going forward would not be so much of a struggle that people will become more united that is my hope anyway and optimistic outlook as you uh, take over so much turmoil that has happened in the previous um, administration lastly i would like to say to you as a as a viewer or as a reader that all i care about right now and going uh, forward from you is your humane acts your acts of kindness empathy understanding care for uh, and care for other human beings i do not care which party you're affiliated with and this is on a global scale i only care for the compassion you show the care you show for other human beings for the love you have within you and for uh people within your own country and all its uh countrymen women children regardless of their background racial sexual religious and cultural beliefs at the end of the day we all bleed the same color we come into this world alone and we die alone we will also most likely the majority of us go in the similar fashion with no exceptions to the room i will leave you with love and kindness over hatred is the only answer and the love starts from within from within you thank you for watching and for for listening my name is chico matenda i am a content creator and creative entrepreneur I grew up in DC metropolitan area and uh, I, I will always consider DC my home.